and welcome to the MBS Show Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hello, I looked upon the world and I saw a pony. And it was fabulous. Oh my gosh. How was it like? It was like so cute, you guys. Like, oh my god. <laughs> and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Songs. I think I just died a little inside. Uh, I need to stop that. <laughs> I'm going to die even more inside if you tell me not to do it. Sapphire, don't giggle. Okay. You cannot giggle. Okay. If you, if you giggle, everyone will die starting with Norman. <laughs> and uh, now Norman is the dead. No! Well, good for me. I had Monster Reborn standby. Oh, there you go. Wait a minute. That's a banned card. That's banned. You're banned. Get out, you cheater. Uh, well, no. Funny enough, Monster Reborn is unbanned. Um, I'm not sure if it's unbanned in the American standard. Again? Uh, well, anyway, um, we're not doing the Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast unless you want us to. <laughs> uh, but, uh, on this week... to do it. <laughs> I was... Yeah, like what she said. <laughs> Specifically, go to patreon.com slash sapphireheartsong and pay her to do it. Yeah, like, let her do it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> anyway, uh, on this week's discussion podcast, we're going to talk about Season 6 as a whole. What do we thought about it? What do we like, dislike, and all that thing. Um, this is coming out on week 3 of Ponies. So, yeah, uh, Season 7 has been out for a while. And you know what? I think now is a good time to talk about the previous season, right? Although season seven, oh my god, did you see that one thing? I know, that's amazing. Especially uh-huh. that one thing with that one thing. Oh, but don't even get me started on that other thing. Oh. Yep, yep. And guys at home, I implore you to look at the description in the link below or the description to see when we're recording this because you'll be surprised. <laughs> but anywho, let's go for what we thought the season as a whole. I'm going to go with Sapphire. If you don't mind. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, so my thoughts on this season overall. It didn't live up to my expectations, per se. And what were your expectations? I don't know. I, I feel like this season could have been something more. I mean, it had some good episodes. It had some bad episodes. But overall, there could have been more to it. That's just a basic rundown of my thoughts. Let's just say I I didn't have a good feeling as soon as the season opener happened. Hmm. All right. And Silver? Well, much the same way. Uh, this is a season that didn't really have bad episodes, but it also had didn't have a lot of episodes that really made me go, oh, wow. There were a few. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it was more of a even keel steady pace so it was the applejack of seasons ah all right uh and a lot of people i know that one of the grand complaints is that starlight glimmer with the emphasis on her episodes stole the show from our lead heroines and while starlight got like seven episodes if you count the two-parters as two episodes she got seven episodes devoted to her there's still a good chunk Devoted to our ponies. And I can name a few episodes that really uh, wowed me. But I come out of it just sort of... Exactly. But I I come out of it just sort of like, well, that was a fun season, but I need a little bit more razzle-dazzle, glitz and glam. And more razzle-dazzle. As for me, season six has been um, a roller coaster of fun because some of the episodes were highly entertaining, yet... Others were just okay. I wouldn't say bad because bad would mean that I wanted to stop watching this show and quit. No, I highly enjoyed most of the episodes. To me, this season was more focused on getting Starlight to the end. Getting us to enjoy her, appreciate her and make us support her. Like back her up and whatnot. What was the one I'm looking for? Um, Empathize? Yes. Something like that, yes. But still, I'm looking at the appearances uh, table for season 6. And she's been in 8 episodes total, including the two-parters. So that makes it 6 episodes total if you count the two-parter as one. And 
she hasn't been around that much to warrant her push. But to me, this season hasn't been all about the starlight, but mostly the exploring of Equestria. Because if you guys remember, the toy line for this season was Explore Equestria or something like that? I thought it was scan the QR codes on their tushes. <laughs> that too. But still, um, that was one of their uh, selling points. Because if you guys remember, there was that swan boat Pinkie Pie thing that was on sale. Um, there was that website thing that they did about traveling to Manhattan, the Crystal Empire, and so on. So to me, There's no reason to visit the Crystal Empire. It does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but it has shiny things, and it's the perfect spa getaway. I've seen better spas. Heck, we saw a better spa in this season. It's a <laughs> spa. True, I, true. I prefer that spa because it's shiny and crystally. <laughs> no, no comment on that one. But still, to me, my expectations were, oh, we're going to travel across Equestria. And, well, to show, oh, oh well, season six did kind of do that, in a way. Because from my remembrance of the season, we traveled to Manhattan, Las Pegasus, the Dragon Empire, the Griffin Empire. Did we, did we travel to Griffin, Bill? No? No, but we did. We got a quick peek at it through Gabby's recollection. Ah, uh, yes. And it still stinks. Uh, yeah, true that. And also we got to see the Badlands where the Changeling Hive is. So yay, to me, it feels in that want, but not really. So that's my thoughts. But so now, let's get into the main point of discussion, which is your overall thoughts on the episodes. Like, how many episodes do you think hit the mark? How many episodes do you think were quote-unquote good and quote-unquote bad? Most of them, I think, were very just steady. They hit the mark well enough. Uh, the only one that really, I think fell apart was Applejack's day off because it's just so slow and kind of and ponderous and you're just sort of waiting for something to happen and unfortunately it's rarity in Applejack uh, they usually play off one against, against one another so well but in this case AJ just ignores rarity and rarity complains and that's more than half the episode and it had spoiled milk because you know we're all craving that character aren't we <laughs> Uh-huh. Well, she did appear once in the whole thing. Like, I mean, she's not kind of a big deal, but... Eh. She ain't no deal. Sister to be tripping. <laughs> I yeah. live in a mansion. Like, shut the hell up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you think that's the weakest one out of this whole entire season? Yep. Yep. Hmm. Oh, okay. What's your... Oh, well, take... Uh, oof. Well, technically, it'll be the... I, I don't know. I mean, in terms of the whole story, probably Applejack's Day Off because of how it wanted to tell the story. Because I understand what they're trying to say. It's like, Applejack, you're teaching your own lesson. You should heed what you say. But she's too blind or she's too tunnel vision to notice that. It need, she needed someone to point it out to her to get the point across. Not saying that it's bad, but the lesson here was a bit eh. And looking through seasons, uh, what do you think about the 28 Pranks Later? Do you think that falls in the same boat? I actually enjoyed 28 Pranks Later as... It's it's what uh, Griffin the Brush-Off would have been had Pinky not been there as a moderating influence. And it is fun to see just which ponies really got into it. I mean, Mrs. Cake is selling it like there's no tomorrow. She missed her call in the theater. <laughs> all righty then, all righty then. So yeah, um, yeah. If you take a look, see, I, I think uh, when you say that way, Twenty Eight Pranks Leader does uh, hold strong to that point. Yes, I know a lot of people don't like it because it's Rainbow Dash getting her comeuppance, but sometimes comeuppance is needed. All righty then. So, Seppi, your thoughts, or you want to avoid it like the plague? Can I avoid it like the plague? Sure, you can. Cookie. <laughs> uh, as for me, 20 Pranks Later was an okay episode. I like it, and I didn't see any problems to it. Like, I think the setup was good, but, uh, how do I put this? 
I didn't see any problems. Like I really enjoy it. Like people had problems with it, and I couldn't see where they're coming from. And the last one I think that people had a lot of problem was the times they are changeling. Ah, uh, that one. Well, that that was a good Spike episode. Spike's done so much better these past few seasons. Mm, I agree uh, with you. Yeah. My only beef is that one thorax is just sort of born good, which I always worry when we when you say when you send the message. Well, people are either born good or they're born bad. We're born and we learn. That is more natural in my eyes. And also, Spike undoes an entire generation of race of racism and frustration with one song. Always. That's going to be one powerful song. Yeah, Tatooine song has moved me, especially that blown to bits part. <laughs> <laughs> and Seppi? Times they are a changeling. Good episode. Hated the song. Really? I really didn't like the song. I'm thankful for DVR. DVR? What's that? The thing that makes me rewind all my television. Ah, uh, DVR, that thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's be kind, rewind, but only to yourself. Oh, true that, true that. Uh, for me, I didn't thought this episode was bad, and I, my problem with it was kind of a lower kind of thing where, in my mind. Changeling could only change into living beings that be ponies, animals, or whatever it may be. But in this episode, they show Thorax change into a rock. And it breaks continuity or it kind of, well, it yeah, technically breaks continuity in what we had in the CMC micro where they show us a creature called a mimic where its only job is to change into inanimate objects. And I think Twilight mentioned that Changeling couldn't do that. Well, I've I've always viewed the comics as distant cousins of the show, multiple times removed. <laughs> True, but to me, it feels that oh man, th- this was good because you know I play I play Dark Souls and there's a treasure chest called a Mimic, and yeah, like that'll be good. But uh, but still, that's besides the point. That's my only beef with it. But overall, it's not bad. It's not a bad episode. I've encountered many mimics in video games as treasure chests. I've, I've grown to loathe them. Yep. Like, uh, what have you been playing to encounter mimics? Well, let's see here. What was the, it was the last game on the PlayStation 2. Rogue Galaxy. Rogue Galaxy? Really now? Yes. That had, that had mimics that were treasure chests and they were so powerful. That, you know, you're low level, when you're a low level and a mimic springs out, you're dead. There's no help in it. You're dead. It's like, hey, here's your prize. You're dead. <laughs> you just bought Dark Souls. You're dead. You're going to die a lot and a lot and a lot. Oh, I hope you learned your lesson. <laughs> uh, all right, then. So that's kind of the bad out of the way. What about the good? What are your favorite episodes for this season? Oh, such a such a choice, such a fine choice. Oh, uh, let's see. Fire is one of them. Well, that's one of them at least. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Uh, Flutter Brother. Oh uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that was good. The and season I... finale was one of my favorite episodes, and not just because it's the end. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of fun with the hearth swarming tale. Oh yeah, stranger than fan fiction was also fun with um. Was the one that's it? Penton Oswald? Uh-huh. Yeah, Penton Oswald. Dungeons and Discords? Yes, I, I will say that any D&D fan would be very thrilled by that by that episode. True. Yeah, yeah. I like I like Buck Ball season. Oh yeah, it was Zen Snails. Zen Snails, yeah. his most positive presentation. Zen Snails for life, man. I may be alone on this one, but I like Viva Las Pegasus. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Viva Las Pegasus. Gonna set my soul on fire. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and another, probably another one that I'm alone on this is Every Little Thing She Does. Uh, that one's I more middle of the road for my, for me. I think this is the point where people either love or hate Starlight Glimmer. And 
I just like the part where bugs are crawling over Fluttershy. <laughs> and the poor animals are just as scared of her as, as Starlight. I know. Yeah. And there, there's certain scenes in this one where it makes this episode work for some people. Is it just me, or is it like Starlight's version of the sword premise? A little bit. Instead of controlling Broom, she controls her friends! <laughs> yeah, it feels like the Sorcerer's Apprentice Fantasia. We, we've been seeing the episodes that we like, but we haven't been talking about why we like them. Like, any reason why? Multiple reasons why. Let's... I'm sorry, I'm ta- I, I seem to be assuming I'm going first on everything, so... Sure, go ahead, man. Uh, like, you're, you're always the first one to go. All right, Gauntlet of Fire expands the dragons. Spike is given a chance to be a true hero and show his very, very best. Opens the door for more dragon stories. And we're introduced to Ember, who is uh, so Sundre, you cannot handle this level of Sundre. It's not like I like you or anything. Baka! <laughs> <laughs> I just love Ember. Ember, Ember's got to be one of my favorite dragons for MLP. Uh, I think she took over Spike's place, so yeah. Oh, he's been outdone by his possible waifu. Yes. Uh, the fanfics I've been reading about those two. <laughs> the only thing that's sort of surprising is how irrelevant the main ponies become. But then again, you need, I don't think they have to be the center stars of this world every single time. I actually get worried when they're the only ones who do anything in this big wide world. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this season or the previous season started the trend of uh, our main six are there, but they're not the main focus. They're in the background doing stuff. And they're doing stuff to move the story along. Or is it just me? Because I think... Season 6 was the episode where most of the main 6 were not involved. If they were involved, they're kind of the background or the helper for the main crew or person. Or with the, with the cart before the ponies, they are the saboteur. Ah, yes, true. The cart before the ponies. That's another good one too. Uh, I think, wait, the cart before the ponies? Uh, is it on your marks? Uh, cart before the ponies, where they're doing the race. The car before the pony. Yeah, yes, that's up derby episode. racers. Giddy up derby racers. That's season, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, that's episode 14, yes. Yeah. The, the main six here did overstep their bounds a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, always. not the main six, just three of them. Oh, true. But talking about the songs, what do you think about this season's song? Were there any memorable songs? Were they fun? Oh, are you kidding? Uh, the whole of a heartwarming tale has fun songs. Hmm. True. True. But other than that, anything else? Because I'm trying so hard to remember. Because I've been talking to one of my friends, Daniel Anthony. I mentioned to him that in the season past season three, most of the songs were not memorable. Well, I don't know about. I loved in last season Countess Coloratura's songs. Oh yeah, that's that's an awesome song. But like, we we don't have anything like a winter wrap up or an out of the dress or even the smile song. And for anything past season three, like there's some good songs here and there, but it's hard to remember them. If I'm getting my point across, I hear yeah, I hear what you're saying. But I still have fun with the songs. I still hum get. Uh, Derby Racers more than a few times. I'm not saying that the songs are bad, but they're just not memorable. Could it be because of where we are, or specifically me in the fandom, because I'm not listening to the song on a 24-7 basis anymore? It could be. Tell me, have you had the Sweep remix going? Sweep, 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 sweep. Funny story with the Sweep thing. My, my friend British Ninja actually did a remix on the sweeping song and I have another friend who was also from England who like um whose job is to take care of kids in the daycare. There was a day where the um the kids 
were uh, taking, like, play brooms and, like, going sweep, 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 sweep. Like, oh, where did you hear that? Oh, we heard it from a ninja pony. And he knew exactly who it was because he's also a mutual friend of ninja. <laughs> it's it's adorable. Ninja <laughs> pony. Oh, wow. And he does have a sweep, sweep, sweep remix. Did Ninja know about this? Yes, he knows about this. What did he say? What did he think? That is adorable. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, nice. Some of the songs here are memorable to a point. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I need to listen to them more to get a feel for them. Well, that's part of it. We Now that we are so far into this series... I think many of us, we have our favorites from the early days, so it's harder for the new stuff to be given its chance. I don't think that's also true, because some of the newest songs are awesome, like the songs from Colortura or Rara, The Spectacle. That is a really good song. Or uh, Equestria My Home, or even, what's the other one that she sang after... The Man uh, As You Can Side? Yes, that one. Like, all those are good songs. Like, uh, Lena Hall did a great job with those songs. But, I, I don't know. It feels that the songs are not popping anymore, if you know what I mean. It could be that I'm selective, probably. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm saying, you know what I mean a lot. That's not good. Honestly, the songs and, um, My Little Pony are usually pretty hit or miss usually more of a miss than a hit. I don't know. I, I don't find myself enjoying the song. Hmm. And Silver, what about you? Do you agree with this? Since you mentioned before that you're not the music guy as uh, song, as you mentioned before uh, too sketchy when you mentioned that you didn't really enjoy the uh, what you might call this the Cantaloupe Wedding songs? Well, I, enjo- I enjoyed this day aria in that it's very well sung. It's about the only thing I feel Cadence does right. <laughs> All right. But I've enjoyed the music. I just, it has to strike just the right chord of character and positivity. I like uplifting stuff. I don't think I've ever heard anyone humming, I've got to find a way from season three. Hmm, well, I do enjoy that one. The song itself is really interesting. I, I do enjoy that one. Seriously. <laughs> I bet nope. your goth friends who you hang out with other than us are probably singing it. <laughs> what, what, when you say other than us, that's implying you're goth. Are you goth? Foreman, <laughs> are you feeling goth right now? No. Wait, I didn't say that. That was seppy. <laughs> like you yeah, that... hang out with other people other than us. How dare you? How dare you? know, that's funny. Some of my friends have that same attitude. (laughs) I'm kidding, though. Oh, boys. I'm not sure if they are, but (laughs) here we are in this situation. Oh, boys. Anyway. (laughs) And uh, I'm trying to bring it back here. And talking about songs, you guys remember On Your Marks? That's episode four. On your mark, me too, Oh I'm yeah, sorry, where, where where Apple Bloom is all mopey about her. Yeah, that one. That one. It felt like it was spinning its wheels because we cut, much like Apple Jack's Day Off. It just sort of felt like we know this isn't going anywhere. We know they're gonna get back together as buds. Well, they, here's uh, the thing. Yeah. It's a it's a misunderstanding to begin with. But what I'm more focusing on is the song for that episode because. That song was not bad. Uh, Michelle Kribber did a really good job on singing that song. Although everyone else is just focused on ten- Tender Taps, her newest romance. Ship, ship, ship. As he flashes his, his plot at passersby. Look at my cutie mark. Look at my cutie mark. Ladies, you wish you had a cutie mark this fine. Uh-uh. Uh, you, you, you know what? Totera did a remix of you saying, look at my tush. Yep, look at my tush. Look at my tush. Look. Look at my tush. <laughs> uh, well, it's up there, people, if you want to go hunt for it. Besides, that, this season feels a bit hidden miss in some places. What do you think? Is this because of the writers or us as a whole? I think a little both. A lot of the writing staff is brand new. There's a pretty high turnover. Gosh, 
how many writers, when I look this over, yeah, there's not a lot of, my, Josh Haber and Dave Polsky are probably the most senior at this point. I think Mike Vogel's there too. Wait, what episode did Dave Polsky do again? He was part of the contributor for On Your Marks. Mike Vogel has been a part of the production process since the get-go, but he only started being a show writer this season. Oh, you mean season six? He wasn't on season five? I, I don't think so. Not as a writer. Huh. Maybe you're right. The dude has been part of this show pretty much since the beginning, but he's worked on the development side. Hmm, all right. And you know what? I've seen um, the Fox Brothers in another show. I think that was in Guardian of the Galaxy. And yeah, they've been around. I What must that be like, I wonder? You transfer from a show with a talking raccoon with guns to pastel ponies with magic. Does he envision Rocket just uh, in the corner saying, This seems very unmanly, and yet I love them so. What is this duality, eh? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, who knows? Probably. But I, I don't know. I mean, the writing staff here did a fine job. Like, some of the writers here are pretty senior in what they do, and they do a good job. I, I don't know what to say, because when we review the show, we don't really view the writers. We just view the show as a whole. Probably we should think of the writers also. No? Yes? I tend to rely on death of the author. Hmm. What the writer intended is not nearly as vital as what the audience interprets. Mm, all right. So what else can we say? I mean, Silver, is there anything that we're missing out? Is there anything you want to point out? Well, we only talked about one episode why we thought it was good. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm going to highlight Flutter Brother as it was one of Fluttershy's best episodes, and Fluttershy is my favorite. So. Oh, true, true. Yay. Uh, this is the episode that we have been looking forward to for a long time now, which is more family members. Like, we get to see Fluttershy's family and brother. Like, she has a brother. And, oh my god, he's not what we think he is. Like, he's not shy. He's not timid. He's the total opposite. He is a jerk. You know what I think there, Norman? What? Except for Breeze just peeves me off. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Oh my Are you sure you have been talking to the Mr. Beaverton Beaver Teeth? <laughs> Such language uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, True And you know what? Uh, I think the writers heard what we like And I think we're going to get introduced to more family members in season 7 So yay then we'll find out that they're all terrible people. Like, how did these ponies grow up so healthy? Oh. <laughs> oh, talking about family members, we did get to hear Twilight's parents talk. And they sound exactly like their children. Mm-hmm. In fact, they are played by their children. <laughs> oh, it's time paradox. I am my father. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, God, Silver, no, why? Uh, but still, um, family members seems to be one of the things that we all want. And, you know, season seven is going to give us that. So that's cool. It's also going to give us William Shatner pony. Yep. And also Felicia Days. Aren't you Hi. excited to see <laughs> William Shatner in My Little Pony? Sparkle! So <laughs> 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 But Although, still, but still. Yes, I know, Silver. I'm a brat. Although I, I'm, I'm. Well, here we are. We've, we've, we've lapsed into speculating on the new season. Mm-hmm. I just know this will feature Applejack's parents. Ah, yes. And the well, we didn't get to see them in uh, Where the Apple Lies, which was kind of surprising. Ah, true. Yes, uh, Where the Apple Lies is one of those episodes where. We didn't ask for it, but we're glad we had it because we got a whole episode where Big Mac talks a lot. <laughs> talks a lot. He's, pro- he's probably quiet because he's still screaming on the inside from that event. Oh, yeah. My leg. My leg. No! Uh, oh, yeah. But still, this season has a lot to offer. Let's see. Um, not a good episode. You mentioned Flutterbrother. I'm going to go for Dungeons and Discord. This episode was fun. We get to see the boys in action for a change. We get to see Big Mac's fantasy, which is him being a unicorn. So that's cool. Hey, hey, Norman. Hey, Norman. Yeah. Could could you say that the boys are back in town? <laughs> the boys are back in town. 
Boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Boys it's not even the expensive. Oh, well, Stallone Pony. That'll be something to see. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He could be the Italian Stallion. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna shoot on it now. Okay. <laughs> I hope someone doesn't break the law. Oh, no, I, no, I am the law. Oh, hey, go hey, to a meat garage and just tenderize the meat. Uh, oh, hey, fly. <laughs> Oh my god, Silver, why? <laughs> oh, but still. <clears throat> oh, we are all over the place with this one. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, uh, I do highly enjoy Dungeon and Discord. And what else do we got? Like, uh, um, well, the return of Trixie caused quite the stir. Oh yeah, ooh, that was in no second princess princess. yes wow and people seem to love and hate this one well twilight was not at her best this and poor twilight she got the short end of the straw this season if she was if she wasn't observing starlight's progress she was observing spike's progress i think the sweep song was the only time twilight got to be just twilight Mm, true true Sweep, 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 sweep. Sweep, 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 sweep. Oh, my God. So right now. Oh, well. Uh, but still, um, No Second Princess was another good episode. But they did brought up a lot of... Mm, how do I put this? If I do remember right, the internet was uh, as a teasy with this one. With how some people interpret Trixie's... Act of well jumping to the lion's mouth as she suicidal. committed suicide, or she was trying to. Yeah, that. I am not one of those people, but I see why people would think that, especially if it's a way for them to express their own feelings and experiences. So there's that, and surprisingly enough, that was written by Nikon Flown, who also did the Celero review. And the Cellaro review is another good one too. That one, that was one of the funnest, although Rarity, it's funny that she both sought out and opened her new boutique in the same season. True that. It was kind of quick. Like it was done in a few episodes, like she was looking for a store in the gift of the mod pie, then she opened it six episodes later. You would have thought that would have been a bit longer. And yet she gave rise to one of the best memes for this season. No spoilers! Oh, so true. So true. And, well, talking about rarity, Spice Up Your Life is another good one. Oh, yeah. Well, that also over time, it's not as good, maybe, for me. Really? I don't know. Like, later on down the line, I still enjoy the song. I think that's one of the better songs of the season. I think what Silver said here is true. It's dividing us in terms of what we really think or how we feel. I personally like this episode. The song was good. The message was clear. Yeah, but it could have been handled better. Like in between Pinky and Rarity. But then I guess there'd be a no conflict or something. I don't know. Mm, well, true, well, let's true. Let's talk about the, the maps episodes in general. Because this one did something very different from season five. Oh, and that is? Well, in season five, you'd send two of the main six out, but you'd, but really, one of them knew how to fix things. And the other ah. was there as a sidekick. Pinky knew how to fix Griffin Stone, and Rainbow Dash was just there to be rescued. Rarity was so dead set on how to fix uh, Manhattan, but it was Applejack's work that really saved the day. Twilight wanted to be the solver of was it the Hooffields and the McColts, but it's Fluttershy and her spy network of of animals. <laughs> spy network of animals. Wow, that sounds so bad when you say it that way. Well, when they talk about Fluttershy actually having career aspirations, it's like you mean she's not blackmailing everyone. <laughs> she d- she doesn't receive information from her little birds. So wait, when you say there's a fly on the wall, that's literally true, right? <laughs> exactly. 
Fluttershy has all the flies in her pocket. Could you just imagine her teaming up with Discord to create such chaos and blackmail? Oh my goodness. And Discord is in her, it's like putty in her hooves. Well, oh gosh, I think we discovered the newest villain of Equestria. She has Fluttershy gone mad with power. <laughs> you know she can be there. But uh, this season, when the two ponies go to solve a problem, they each have an idea on how uh, to go about it, and they're both wrong. Now suddenly it's not one one is right, one is wrong. It, the answer is lies in compromise. True. And I think uh, Viva Las Pegasus is a good example of that. I think the wrong part is not there, but I think the right answer is uh, Fluttershy wants to help the Flim Flam, while Applejack wants to help everyone other than the Flim Flam brothers. But once they meet up and discover what they really need to do, it was Applejack that needs to put her past behind and do what was right to help the situation, which was help everyone from uh, Glam, Gladmain. Gladmain, right? Gladmain, yes. And he, wa- he was a fun villain. So, so delightfully sociopathic. Oh, yes. So true. Manipulative, manipulative too. Although the dude starts mouthing off to the friends of the princess of friendship. Via, like, dude, she could take you down with a word. You really don't want to test your luck here. But Silver, he's a citizen of Equestria. The princess couldn't do anything to him. He's a changeling. Sorry? Attack! <laughs> oh my gosh, I couldn't believe I put in the wild, uh, the good, the bad, and the pony things like this one. <laughs> That's right, Norma. You need to go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. Oh, I already did, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Ooh, our little Norman is growing up. <laughs> Just don't be uh, in the sticky corner. Oh, ew. Okay. Whoa, uh, Safi, what have you been up to? <laughs> Blame Aeon. Oh, my. Uh, please. So, what else? Like The map episode seems to be playing a part in this one. Well, what else... Are we missing? Like, I, I think we may talk about songs. We talk about the, well, some of the bad episodes, quote unquote bad. Some of the good episodes. I think there's still more to it. The map for this season, um, quote unquote writers. What else is there to add on to this? The sheer staggering number of waifus that fans have, have developed. Really? Well, Besides let's Ember? See. There's Princess Ember. Mm-hmm, true. There's. I don't know how many waifus did come from the season. Oh, right. And, uh, who's the what's it? What's her name? Vapor Trail. Uh-huh. And, okay. Gabby. Talk, well, oh, oh yeah, how could I forget Gabby? To be a waifu. Don't care. She's waifu material. But anyway, um, talking about quote unquote waifus. <laughs> um, background characters. <laughs> so, sorry. Tertiary characters. Like, this season seems to be playing a lot on introducing new characters for future use. Like we mentioned before, we got Gabby Vapor Trails. Uh, what was his partner? Sky Stinger. Yeah, Sky Stinger, uh, Ember, and well, we did get that Dragon Jerk. Who his name was? Um, Garble. Yeah, Garble back. No, Garble was he? Garble? No, 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 no. Uh, Give a second. Kind of fire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Garble. So it was Garble, his name is, eh? Yeah, Garble. Oh, okay, yeah. So we, we did get them back some more. Like, I, I think this season introduced a lot of tertiary characters for future use and for fanfic writers to write upon. Hey. So, yeah, who was your favorite? Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I was saying, who was your favorite of all the new tertiary characters? I think Ember and made the big... Oh. Ember. I yeah, love Ember. her so much I have a poster on my wall. <laughs> Ember right. made a big impact as she's like, Oh, please don't make me talk about friendship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And you know what? I'm going to buck the trend because my favorite and my wallpaper for now is Gabby. Gabby Griffin. I, I just like her. She's so awesome. Her character is just so bubbly and positive. That's what I really like about her character. I'm just happy to have a griffin who's not mean. Yes, that's true too. Uh, but then you have to say, oh, is it because of 
her upbringing or is she born good, blah, 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 then nah. Uh, they basically say in the flashback she's born good. And then Lady Gaga ponies off to the side, I was born this way. <laughs> but still, I she. Baby, I was born this way. Uh, but, but she was a great addition to the Griffin. So, yay, that's awesome. I can't wait to see more of her in the future. I hope we do. Although we all know that there is only one true Griffin with a cutie mark and I'm dating him. Mine. I will not let Twilight touch him for he is mine. Uh, Kaden! Yeah. Uh, what were we saying about creepy? I know. Yes. The difference is I'm an overprotective girlfriend who won't let any other. Not yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Anywho, <laughs> uh, this this season had a lot of interesting ideas that they tried to pull off. Uh, probably some of them worked. Probably some of them didn't. Uh, like Pony Point of View, that was an interesting one that they did. But they end, they ended the three horn bunny up. Do you know how freaking cute that thing is? True. It's like a puppy of the sea. And from what I heard, horn he's also murderous. What? The three horn bunny up, the thing that knocked over the boat. Let no, me. No, three no, horn no. bunny up, let me look that up. Three horn up. Twenty point of view. No, Norman, I couldn't hear you. Something about a murderous? Yeah, sorry, um, I, like I was saying, uh, the three horn bunny up is cute. But in, well, in our world, it's kind of murderous. It's trying to eat people, if I remember right. From Australia. Yay. I don't know anything about I haven't read up on the bunyip. It but... looks <laughs> like a dog mixed with the Loch Ness Monster, I guess. Exactly. Yes, like, it's, right. it's so cute. It's a very cute. I didn't even guess it's cute. Okay. You're making me so mad, I'll just t- talk to the you. I didn't even mean it's not cute. I was bad. Oh my god, it's so Look at those eyes. Oh, wow. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right, the silver. So, yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, I heard it from a friend, uh, I think Twilight Genesis. Uh, he mentioned to me that the Banyip was kind of bad. Like most mythological creatures are. Hmm. I'm seeing a pattern here. Well, that's why I kind of like it. At least in this show, it's just there to be nice. For once, we have a mythical creature that isn't trying to eat anyone. But, of course, true. in real life, ev- everyone was always afraid of getting eaten by wild beasts. Oh, true, true. All being lured to their death by mermaids. Well, that isn't morbid in any way whatsoever. Oh, yes. At least we didn't get harpies. Harpies are strange no! creatures. Oh, they just harpy on about everything. <laughs> yes, indeed. So I, I think we're close to the end. And you know what? Talking about the end, what about the season's finale? What do you guys think about it that we haven't already mentioned in our review of To Wear Him Back Again? If it were the end of the series, I don't think it would have worked, but it's not. And I'm fine with it. I think it's good to have one, at least one series where someone else takes the reins on confronting a big conflict. Mm-hmm, true that. And overall, this uh, season's finale was, well, I hate to say it, but it was a setup for the next season because it's opening up more questions than answering our questions or answering questions that we had. <laughs> like, how is Starlight going to pay rent? She has been given no practical uh, business skills. You've learned about friendship. Now, get out of my house. <laughs> and talking about getting out of your house, I think that's one of the few episodes that will be coming out next season. Get out of my house? Yes. Technically, when this episode comes out, we already watched it. So yeah, I'm going to just say it. Um, I, I believe that one of the episodes is Twilight saying that, oh, um, I've done everything that Starlight needs to be done. And I remember Celestia kicking you out and sending me to Ponyville. So I should do the same for Starlight. Okay, Starlight, I'm kicking you out so you can learn something about friendship. Go ahead. Bye-bye. And then we see a scene where Starlight and Sunburst seem to get pulled into uh, the black hole of nothingness. So great, great lesson, Twilight. Actually, okay, in fairness, I know someone will point this out. I think that is just sort of a what-if or alternate future scenario. Really? Well, yeah, you see an ethereal Celestia, Twilight, and Spike in the background as they two get sucked in. I haven't seen much about it. But uh, by the way that they're drawing the alchemy circle, I'm thinking that, hmm, I have a dog. I have a girl. (laughs) 
Or don't you dare. You don't combine Winona <laughs> and Applejack. <laughs> no, no, no. Terrible FME joke. Funny joke? Uh, maybe not so much. As, as Cookie Monster said, it's okay. We appreciate your efforts, but it just, it's not there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I take it back. De- terrible, terrible, terrible. <clears throat> I, I watched Cookie Monster and John Oliver on a skit together and, you know, it's too it's adorable good. for words. It's almost as adorable as the bunyip. <laughs> uh, yes. And, well, talking about adorableness, uh, Torex, new look, he looks mighty fine. Uh, what I find funny <laughs> is that we've seen from previews that he talks and he still has his old voice. But when he transformed, the poor boy became a mute. Uh, true that. Silver, I think I can find something even more adorable than Yip. Well, what is it? There's my family's golden. I mean, you know, that's that's pretty adorable right there. True. And my fluffy cat. Fluffy cats are cute. And why are the pictures not loading? Uh, uh, yeah, that picture. Oh, yeah. yay! Oh, uh, that is adorable. Puppies are adorable. It is their true, natural defense yeah. when they tear up all your stuff. Because if they weren't that cute, you'd be <laughs> furious. Oh, yeah. So true. So true. Uh, anything to add on? Because I think I've said my piece on the whole season six. Silver? I feel that even though she had an episode devoted to her history, Applejack still got the least amount of interest. And I, I, I truly wish the dear girl could get a little bit more respect. And I do believe season seven would be that story with one of the stories involving her family. But if it's a flashback, then we just might get more fandom angst. Your parents are dead! (laughs) Well, at least we get a confirmation that they're dead! (laughs) Uh, Just look at puppies, everything will be okay! (laughs) Oh, so true. So true. Well, at least uh, one of Applejack's superpowers is being rich. But she's not rich. They're always they're always the struggling <laughs> farm. Mm, yeah, true that. Uh, that uh, that's happy? spoiled Sorry? milk's superpower now. Okay, yeah, I'm done true. spamming puppies. <laughs> all right. Even though um, you Seppi. all secretly love it. Uh so cute. But anywho, Seppi, what what are your thoughts on that season? It was a season that I had high hopes for, especially with an appealing episode title like the crystalline, but no. Oh. Looks are deceiving, I learned. <laughs> All right. S- Safi raises a good point. We completely t- ignored Flurry Heart. We send back her? <laughs> I'm not saying there's a Flurry lot to say. Flurry Heart was a thing that existed. There's nothing to it. You, you, you know, we, we don't need to point out. Like, we could just go away. You, you know, there's still chance. Well, it happened. She's a part of the show. She, the alicorn status continues to just fluctuate. It's All like your cotton candy. It sticks out like a sore thumb, but you try to ignore the fact that it exists because it sounds gross. <laughs> oh, gosh. And yes, that uh, is a thing. There is such a thing as beer cotton candy. What? There's beer everything at this point. Yeah. There's also popcorn cotton candy. And bacon yeah. cotton candy. Oh my god, it's bacon. Bacon should be on everything, that's why I know. But well, anyhow, well, if we're talking about Flurry Heart, then yeah, I, I think she needs to be addressed. Like, the new addition to the Sparkle family, uh, Flurry Heart. Mm. <sighs> well, at least she doesn't have those beady eyes. What? I like the beady eyes. Me too! Am I the only one who... Okay, I'm not the only one who likes the beady eyes. I don't know. Some people were freaked out by the beady eyes, by the twins. Really? I found it, I found it cute and an indicator of youthfulness. If anything, I'm freaked out by Flurry Heart's huge, fully developed eyes that see into your soul. Pretty much. <laughs> you think I'm doing uh, this on purpose, puny mortals? You will all die before me. <laughs> uh, still, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, Flurry Heart was a nice addition to the Sparkle family. Uh, it made, Shining armor look, quote unquote, human, and well, I don't know. We'll be getting an episode with her and Twilight in this season on season seven. So can't wait to see how much trouble she can get into. A lot of trouble. Probably. 
And I need to point out something here. Having baby characters in a show like this is a bit tedious because from the way I look at it, we won't be seeing them growing up. So that's going to be really, really bad. I have no idea. We thought that we never thought the Keymark Crusaders would get their cutie marks. True. The possibilities well, are endless. But for yeah. Flory Hart to grow up, she everyone else would have to like grow older. True. But we don't have to look at her specifically. We can just go for the twins. Um Pumpkin and Pound. Pound cake. Yes, thank you. So they're there and they're not growing up. They're still little Babies. So, yeah. uh, but still, th- those are my thoughts on the flurry heart. So anyway, before I end it, anything else to add? No. Yeah. I'm good. Alrighty then. So anyway, uh, that's our thought for season six in a nutshell. Um, I do hope that you enjoy our discussion. And, well, um, here's hoping that season seven would be awesome because I think our next review would be on season seven. Uh, let me see. Um, the first episode, Celestia's advice. So that's going to be amazing and fun. Or you could say super special awesome. Or it could be false advertising. Celestia Barrel appears in the episode and you feel so cheated because you want a Celestia episode and they won't give you a Celestia episode. <laughs> there, there, Silva. There, there. I know how you feel. Okay, I'm there, done there. now. Yep. Silver, but still, like me. Well, Silver, I think you can all bottle it up. I don't want to bottle my emotions. I want them to be free. And besides, that, the description makes that sound like another Starlight Glimmer brainwashing episode. Where she declares, I have learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, still, uh, this would be one of those episodes. Mm, where was going? But still, season seven would be three weeks ago when this episode comes out. So yeah, we'll be reviewing uh, season seven. Um, yeah, we'll be reviewing season seven, episode one, Celestial. Is that Celestial or Celestial Advice? Celestial, Celestial Advice. Ah, uh, yes. magical. Yes, sorry, my bad. So we'll be reviewing that. But anywho, I would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Um, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Numdrakatorius, Starstream, and also Master of Like. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And for you guys at home who would like to support us, you can do so at patreon.com slash DMBS show. A dollar will get you a thank you and full access to everything we have. And five dollars will get you, well, if you want us to review or talk about something, it's over there. Previously, we talked about the Darkwing Duck and DuckTales crossover comic, which was really entertaining. And we'll have more soon once I get in touch with the Patreon people. Yes. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Bacon Cotton Candy. And I've been Silver. And I've been Silver. And I've been Bacon Cotton Candy. And we'll guys catch you next week for another episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Goodbye. Uh, popcorn. Oh, By the way, Silver, I thought cotton candy you would enjoy. Uh, key lime cotton candy? Yep. Exactly! Yeah.